In this video, we describe the cataract surgery in a pediatric traumatic cataract. This was the child of a mine worker who was playing in a mine and suffered injury to the eye during one of the blasts that were recently performed during the mining surgery. And he was hit by the material that comes out from these blasts. Uh, this was a 9-year-old child who presented to us with an adherent leukoma, a traumatic cataract, arical lenticular sinusia, as well as a subconjunctival foreign body. And this is the cataract surgery being done. We first implanted, injected uh, the first viscoelastic, that is viscoat, into the anterior chamber to coat the corneal endothelium and to prevent any further injury to the corneal endothelium. Uh, these are the side port and the main incisions being uh, performed and uh, the capsule was stained to uh, aid in the capsular excess because the capsule was thought to be fibrotic and it could have been torn in such cases. The arugal lenticular sinicae are removed here, they are being cut with a vana scissor. A capsular excess was striped, this is the capsular excess being initiated in the area away from the arugal lenticular sinicae and the area of fibrosis. However, in the fibrotic area, uh, the rexus could not be completed because the capsule was very fibrotic and therefore it was cut using a vana scissor and even though it was difficult, the uh, capsulotomy uh, could be completed. It wasn't a continuous rexus but it was still uh, achieved its purpose. Uh, here, the cataract is being removed uh, using bimanual irrigation aspiration. These cataracts as a rule are quite soft and they can easily be removed using the irrigation aspiration only and physical emulsification is hardly ever needed. Uh, this was a 9 year old child so it was uh, quite obvious that the cataract would be soft uh, these, uh, but it, uh, because of the uh, history of trauma the uh, strands were still difficult to remove because the pupil was not dilated fully and therefore uh, the IA was performed carefully to avoid any further injury. Uh, at the end of the uh, uh, cataract removal, a posterior capsule plaque was seen and a posterior capsular excess was performed. First, uh, viscoelastic viscoat was used to tamponade the vitreous so that there would be no uh, anterior movement of the vitreous during the uh, posterior capsular excess. Once the vitreous is tamponaded, the posterior capsular excess is being attempted. But during this process, the entire posterior plaque uh, came out on its own while performing the posterior capsular excess. So here you can see that the posterior plaque is coming out uh, even while the surgeon was actually attempting a capsular excess. So the entire posterior capsule plaque is being removed uh, and this achieves a very uh, good visual access and this would be very helpful for the child during the post-operative period because there would be no risk of obscuration of the visual access because of PCO. Now because the capsular band was a little compromised because of the large uh, piece of uh, plaque that was removed, uh, this helon 5 was used to inflate the capsular fornices to aid in the IOL implantation. Uh, this is a single piece hydrophilic acrylic IOL which is being implanted. A three piece IOL should always be avoid, avoided in these cases uh, because it can be traumatic. The implantation of a three piece IOL is more uh, difficult and the haptic management may also become difficult in the presence of a posterior capsule here or a posterior capsule excess as in this case. Uh, once the IOL is uh, carefully placed in the back, the viscoelastic is being removed from the uh, anterior chamber as well as from under the IOL. Uh, the because we have used both viscoat as well as zero on 5 in this case, it was very essential to remove the viscoelastic completely. Uh, now pyrocarton is being injected and because it was felt that this fibrotic anterior capsule edge was coming in the visual axis, this was also removed using a vana scissor so that the visual axis could be cleared completely. Here as you can see, the fibrotic anterior capsule has been removed and the uh, visual axis is clear. Now, intracameral preservative T uh, triamcillinone was used to stain any vitreous strands in the anterior chamber so that they could be removed. However, in this case, uh, no vitreous strands were seen and after this, the incisions were hydrated to seal them. Here you can see the incisions are being sealed. Now, in these cases, we perform the cataract surgery normally at around 6 weeks after the initial perforation repair has been done because by that time, the inflammation has subsided down. Uh, at the end, uh, we injected intracameral moxifloxacin preservatively, that is intracameral rigamox. And now here you can see a subconjunctival foreign body being removed. In this particular child, it was a non-radio opaque uh, aluminum foreign body which had come from the uh, material that is used to initiate the blast in the mining. 
uh, this, as you can see, uh, the country saliva is uh, being uh, dissected to reach the foreign body. Now, in these cases, it is very important to do a good imaging studies, an X-ray and an ultrasound before performing the surgery, so as to rule out any foreign body and to rule out uh, any problems in the posterior segment like a retinal detachment or a, a posteriorly retained intraocular foreign body, etc., which must be done before the surgery so that we can do a good management and also for medical legal purposes, these documentations are extremely, extremely important. So the foreign body has been removed. This child, of course, was done under general anesthesia. And at the first post-operative day, there was hardly any information in the anterior chamber. The eye was quiet. And the child achieved a vision of 6, 9, unaided. And of course, the child as well as his parents were very happy. So if these kind of traumatic cataracts can be well managed, they can achieve an excellent visual outcome. And uh, the surgeon has to be prepared to handle the many difficulties that can be encountered in such cases. Thank you.